the Shang Dynasty or Yin Dynasty, according to traditional historiography, ruled in the Yellow River Valley in the second millennium BC, succeeding the Xia Dynasty and followed by the Zhou Dynasty. The classic account of the Shang comes from texts such as the Classic of History, Bamboo Annals and Records of the Grand Historian. According to the traditional chronology based upon calculations made approximately 2,000 years ago by Liu Xin, the Shang ruled from 1766 BC to 1122 BC, but according to the chronology based upon the current text of Bamboo Annals, they ruled from 1556 BC to 1046 BC. The Xia Euro Shang Euro Zhou chronology project dated them from c. 1600 BC to 1046 BC. Archaeological work at the ruins of Yin, which has been identified as the last Shang capital, uncovered eleven major Yin royal tombs and the foundations of palaces and ritual sites, containing weapons of war and remains from both animal and human sacrifices. Tens of thousands of bronze, jade, stone, bone, and ceramic artifacts have been obtained. The workmanship on the bronzes attests to a high level of civilization. The Anyang site has yielded the earliest known body of Chinese writing, mostly divinations inscribed on oracle bones or Euro turtle shells, ox scapulae, or other bones. More than 20,000 were discovered in the initial scientific excavations during the 1920s and 1930s, and over four times as many have been found since. The inscriptions provide critical insight into many topics from the politics, economy, and religious practices to the art and medicine of this early stage of Chinese civilization. Traditional accounts, many events concerning the Shang dynasty are mentioned in various Chinese classics, including the Book of Documents, the Mencius and the Commentary of Zuo. Working from all the available documents, the Han dynasty historian Sima Qian assembled a sequential account of the Shang dynasty as part of his records of the Grand Historian. His history describes some events in detail, while in other cases only the name of a king is given. A closely related, but slightly different, account is given by the Bamboo Annals. The annals were interred in 296 BC, but the text has a complex history and the authenticity of the surviving versions is controversial. The name Yuan is used by Sima Qian for the dynasty, and in the Bamboo Annals for both the dynasty and its final capital. It has been a popular name for the Shang throughout history, and is often used specifically to describe the later half of the Shang dynasty. In Japan and Korea, the Shang are still referred to almost exclusively as the Yin dynasty. However it seems to have been the Zhou name for the earlier dynasty. The word does not appear in the Oracle Bones which refer to the state as Shaanji, and the capital as Daya Shaanji. Course of the dynasty, Sima Qian's Annals of the Yin begins by describing the pre-dynastic founder of the Shang lineage, Xia Euro also appearing as Kia Euro as having been miraculously conceived when Zhandi, a wife of Emperor Ku, swallowed an egg dropped by a blackbird. Zai is said to have helped Yu the Great to control the Great Flood and for his service to have been granted a place called Shang as a thief. Sima Qian relates that the dynasty itself was founded thirteen generations later, when Xi's descendant Tang overthrew the impious and cruel final Xia ruler in the Battle of Ming Tai. The records recount events from the reigns of Tang, Tai Jia, Tai Wu, Pan Zheng, Wu Ding, Wu Yi, and the depraved final king Di Xin, but the rest of the Shang rulers are merely mentioned by name. According to the records, the Shang moved their capital five times with the final move to Yin in the reign of Pan Zheng inaugurating the Golden Age of the dynasty. Di Xin, the last Shang king, is said to have committed suicide after his army was defeated by Wu of Zhou. Legends say that his army and his equipped slaves betrayed him by joining the Zhou rebels in the decisive Battle of Mu. According to the Itzu Shu and Mencius the battle was very bloody. The classic, Minera novel Feng Shen Yan retells the story of the war between Shang and Zhou as a conflict where rival factions of gods supported different sides in the war. After the Shang were defeated, King Wu allowed Di Xin's son Wu Zheng to rule the Shang as a vassal kingdom. However, Zhou Wu sent three of his brothers and an army to ensure that Wu Zheng would not rebel. After Zhou Wu's death, the Shang joined the three governors' rebellion against the Duke of Zhou, but the rebellion collapsed after three years leaving Zhou in control of Shang territory. Descendants, after Shang's collapse, 
Zhou's rulers forcibly relocated Yin diehards, and scattered them throughout Zhou territory. Some surviving members of the Shang royal family collectively changed their surname from the ancestral name Xi to the name of their fallen dynasty, Yin. The family retained an aristocratic standing and often provided needed administrative services to the succeeding Zhou dynasty. The Shi states that King Cheng of Zhou, with the support of his regent and uncle, the Duke of Zhou, enfoft Weizhi, a brother of Di Xin, as the ruler of Song, with its capital at Chang'eu. The rulers of Song would maintain rights honoring the Shang kings until Song was conquered by Qi in 286 BC. Confucius was said to have been a descendant of the Shang kings through the rulers of Song. The vassal state of Ktsu, located in what is now Tangshan, was formed by another remnant of the Shang, and was destroyed by Duke Huan of Qi. Many Shang clans that migrated northeast after the dynasty's collapse were integrated into Yan culture during the Western Zhou period. These clans maintained an elite status and continued practicing the sacrificial and burial traditions of the Shang. Both Korean and Chinese legends state that a disgruntled Shang prince named Zi, who had refused to cede power to the Zhou, left China with a small army. According to these legends, he founded a state known as Jaijia Joseon in northwest Korea during the Gojoseon period of ancient Korean history. However, the historical accuracy of these legends is widely debated by scholars. Early Bronze Age Archaeology Before the 20th century, the Zhou dynasty was the earliest Chinese dynasty that could be verified from its own records. However during the Song dynasty, antiquarians collected bronze ritual vessels attributed to the Shang era, some of which bore inscriptions. Yellow River Valley In 1899, it was found that Chinese pharmacists were selling dragon bones marked with curious and archaic characters. These were finally traced back in 1928 to a site near Anyang, north of the Yellow River in modern Henan Province, where the Academia Sinica undertook archaeological excavation until the Japanese invasion in 1937. Archaeologists focused on the Yellow River Valley in Henan as the most likely site of the states described in the traditional histories. After 1950, remnants of an earlier walled city were discovered near Tsenzhou. It has been determined that the earth walls at Tsenzhou, erected in the 15th century BC, would have been 20 meters wide at the base, rising to a height of 8 meters, and formed a roughly rectangular wall 7 kilometers around the ancient city. The rammed earth construction of these walls was an inherited tradition, since much older fortifications of this type have been found at Chinese Neolithic sites of the Longshan culture. In 1959, the site of the early Tou culture was found in Yanxi, south of the Yellow River near Ruwang. Radiocarbon dating suggests that the early Tou culture flourished circa 2100 BC to 1800 BC. They built large palaces, suggesting the existence of an organized state. The remains of a walled city of about 470 hectares were discovered in 1999 across the Huan River from the Yingzhou site. The city, now known as Huanbu, was apparently occupied for less than a century and destroyed shortly before the construction of the Yingzhou complex. Chinese historians living in later periods were accustomed to the notion of one dynasty succeeding another, and readily identified the Tsenzhou and Erlitoi sites with the early Shang and Xia dynasty of traditional histories. The actual political situation in early China may have been more complicated, with the Xia and Shang being political entities that existed concurrently, just as the early Zhou, who established the successor state of the Shang, are known to have existed at the same time as the Shang. Other sites the early Gang culture represented by the Tsenzhou site is found across a wide area of China, even as far northeast as the area of modern Beijing, where at least one burial in this region during this period contained both early Gang-style bronzes and local-style gold jewelry. The discovery of a Chenga-style GE dagger axe at Xiuhunan demonstrates that even at this early stage of Chinese history, there were some ties between the distant areas of North China. The Pan Longkang site in the middle Yangtze Valley was an important regional center of the early Gang culture. Accidental finds elsewhere in China have revealed advanced civilizations contemporaneous with but culturally unlike the settlement at Anyang, such as the walled city of Sanxingdi in Sichuan. 
Western scholars are hesitant to designate such settlements as belonging to the Shang dynasty. Also unlike the Shang, there is no known evidence that the Sangxingdi culture had a system of writing. The late Shang state at Anyang is thus generally considered the first verifiable civilization in Chinese history. In contrast, the earliest layers of the Wuhang site, predating Anyang, have yielded pottery fragments containing short sequences of symbols, suggesting that they may be a form of writing quite different in form from oracle bone characters, but the sample is too small for decipherment. Genetic studies A study of mitochondrial DNA from Yingzhu graves showed similarity with modern northern Han Chinese, but significant differences from southern Han Chinese. Late Shang at Anyang the oldest extant direct records date from around 1200 BC at Anyang, covering the reigns of the last nine Shang kings. The Shang had a fully developed system of writing, preserved on bronze inscriptions and a small number of other writings on pottery, jade and other stones, horn, etc., but most prolifically on oracle bones. The complexity and sophistication of this writing system indicates an earlier period of development, but direct evidence of that development is still lacking. Other advances included the invention of many musical instruments and observations of Mars and various comets by Shang astronomers. Their civilization was based on agriculture and augmented by hunting and animal husbandry. In addition to war, the Shang also practiced human sacrifice. Kauri shells were also excavated at Anyang, suggesting trade with coast dwellers, but there was very limited sea trade in ancient China since China was isolated from other large civilizations during the Shang period. Trade relations and diplomatic ties with other formidable powers via the Silk Road and Chinese voyages to the Indian Ocean did not exist until the reign of Emperor Wu during the Han Dynasty. Court life At the excavated royal palace of Yingzhu, large stone pillar bases were found along with rammed earth foundations and platforms, which according to Fairbank, were as hard as cement. These foundations in turn originally supported 53 buildings of wooden post and beam construction. In close proximity to the main palatial complex, there were underground pits used for storage, servants' quarters, and housing quarters. Many Shang royal tombs had been tunneled into and ravaged by grave robbers in ancient times, but in the spring of 1976, the discovery of Tomb 5 at Yingzhu revealed a tomb that was not only undisturbed, but one of the most richly furnished Shang tombs that archaeologists had yet come across. With over 200 bronze ritual vessels and 109 inscriptions of Lady Fu Hao's name, archaeologists realized they had stumbled across the tomb of the militant consort to King Wu Ding, as described in 170 to 180 Shang oracle bones. Along with bronze vessels, stoneware and pottery vessels, bronze weapons, jade figures and hair combs, and bone hairpins were found. Historian Robert L. Thorpe states that the large assortment of weapons and ritual vessels in her tomb correlate with the oracle bone accounts of her military career and involvement in Wu Ding's ritual ancestral sacrifices. The capital was the center of court life. Over time, court rituals to appease spirits developed, and in addition to his secular duties, the king would serve as the head of the ancestor worship cult. Often, the king would even perform oracle bone divinations himself, especially near the end of the dynasty. Evidence from excavations of the royal tombs indicates that royalty were buried with articles of value, presumably for use in the afterlife. Perhaps for the same reason, hundreds of commoners, who may have been slaves, were buried alive with the royal corpse. A line of hereditary Shang kings ruled over much of northern China, and Shang troops fought frequent wars with neighboring settlements and nomadic herdsmen from the Inner Asian steppes. The Shang king, in his oracular divinations, repeatedly shows concern about the Fang groups, the barbarians living outside of the civilized two regions, which made up the center of Shang territory. In particular, the Tufang group of the Yanshan region were regularly mentioned as hostile to the Shang. Apart from their role as the head military commanders, Shang kings also asserted their social supremacy by acting as the high priests of society and leading the divination ceremonies. As the oracle bone texts reveal, the Shang kings were viewed as the best qualified members of society to offer sacrifices to their royal ancestors and to the high god Di, who in their beliefs was responsible for the rain, 
wind, and thunder. Religion, Shang religion consisted of a mixture of shamanism, divination and sacrifice. There were six main recipients of sacrifice, D, the high god, nature powers like the sun and mountain powers, former lords, deceased humans who had been added to the dynastic pantheon, pre-dynastic ancestors, dynastic ancestors, and dynastic ancestresses such as the concubines of a past emperor. The Shang rulers subscribed to the notion that these ancestors held power over them and performed rituals to ascertain their intentions. One of the most common rituals was divination, which often was performed to determine whether ancestors desired specific sacrifices or rituals. Divination involved cracking a turtle carapace or rock scapula to answer a question, and to then record the response to that question in the bone itself. It is unknown what criteria the diviners used to determine the response, but it is believed to be the sound or pattern of the cracks on the bone. The Shang also seem to have believed in an afterlife, as evidenced by the elaborate burial tombs built for deceased rulers. Often carriages, utensils, sacrificial vessels, and weapons would be included in the tomb. A king's burial involved the burial of up to several hundred humans and horses as well to accompany the king into the afterlife in some cases even numbering 400. Finally, tombs included ornaments such as jade, which the Shang may have believed to protect against decay or confer immortality. The degree to which shamanism was a central aspect of Shang religion is a subject of debate. The Shang religion was highly bureaucratic and meticulously ordered. Oracle bones contain descriptions of the date, ritual, person, ancestor, and questions associated with the divination. Tombs displayed highly ordered arrangements of bones, with groups of skeletons laid out facing the same direction. Bronze Working Chinese bronze casting and pottery advanced during the Shang dynasty, with bronze typically being used for ritually significant, rather than primarily utilitarian, items. As far back as c. 1500 BC, the early Shang dynasty engaged in large-scale production of bronzeware vessels and weapons. This production required a large labor force that could handle the mining, refining, and transportation of the necessary copper, tin, and lead ores. This in turn created a need for official managers that could oversee both hard laborers and skilled artisans and craftsmen. The Shang royal court and aristocrats required a vast amount of different bronze vessels for various ceremonial purposes and events of religious divination. Ceremonial rules even decreed how many bronze containers of each type a nobleman or noblewoman of a certain rank could own. With the increased amount of bronze available, the army could also better equip itself with an assortment of bronze weaponry. Bronze was also used for the fittings of spoke wheel chariots, which appeared in China around 1200 BC. Military Bronze weapons were an integral part of Shang society. Shang infantry were armed with a variety of stone and bronze weaponry, including Mao spears, Yue pole axes, Ga pole based dagger axes, composite bows, and bronze or leather helmets. The chariot first appeared in China during the reign of Wu Ding. Oracle bone inscriptions suggest that the western enemies of the Shang used limited numbers of chariots in battle, but the Shang themselves used them only as mobile command vehicles and in royal hunts. A crucial factor in the Zok conquest of the Shang may have been their more effective use of chariots. Although the Shang depended upon the military skills of their nobility, Shang rulers could mobilize the masses of town dwelling and rural commoners as conscript laborers and soldiers for both campaigns of defense and conquest. Aristocrats and other state rulers were obligated to furnish their local garrisons with all necessary equipment, armor, and armaments. The Shang king maintained a force of about a thousand troops at his capital and would personally lead this force into battle. A rudimentary military bureaucracy was also needed in order to muster forces ranging from three to five thousand troops for border campaigns to thirteen thousand troops for suppressing rebellions against Shang dynasty. Kings The earliest records are the oracle bones inscribed during the reigns of the Shang kings from Wu Ding. The oracle bones do not contain king lists but they do record the sacrifices to previous kings and the ancestors of the current king, which follow a standard schedule that scholars have reconstructed. From this evidence, scholars have assembled the implied king list and genealogy, 
finding that it is in substantial agreement with the later accounts, especially for later kings. The Shang kings were referred to in the oracle bones by posthumous names. The last character of each name is one of the ten celestial stems, which also denoted the day of the ten-day Shang week on which sacrifices would be offered to that ancestor within the ritual schedule. There were more kings than stems, so the names have distinguishing prefixes such as a da, a zeng, a degreesiko, an abc, c and zc, and a few more obscure names. The kings, in the order of succession derived from the oracle bones, are here grouped by generation. Later reigns were assigned to oracle bone diviner groups by Dong Zhuobin, notes. Gallery, Late Shang Artifacts. See also, Chinese Sovereign, Chinese Mythology, Historical Capitals of China, References, Citations. Works cited. Further reading, Alon, Sarah, The Shape of the Turtle, Myth, Art, and Cosmos in Early China, SUNY Press, ISBN A978. 0-7914-9449-3A, Alon, Herbert J., Sarmarshain's Historical Records, Chapter 3 A Euro The Yin Dynasty, Journal of the Royal Asiatic Society 27, 601 A Euro 615, doi, 10.1017 per second 0035869x0014508 3A, Chang, Quang Chip, Shang Civilization, Yale University Press. ISBN A. 0 300 02885 7 A. Duan, Chang Kun. Gan, Zhu Chun. Wang, Jini. Kian, Paul K. Relocation of Civilization Centers in Ancient China Environmental Factors, Ambio 27, 572 Euro 575, JSTORA 4314793 A. Li. Yuan Yuan. Shen, Sun Yan, Chinese Musical Instruments, Chinese Music Monograph Series, Chinese Music Society of North America Press, ISBN A 1 880464 03 9. Needham, Joseph, Science and Civilization in China, Volume 4, Part 3, Cambridge University Press, ISBN A 978-0-521-07060-7A, Shen, Sin Yan, Acoustics of Ancient Chinese Bells, Scientific American 256, 94, doi, 10.1038 slash Scientific American 0487-104A, Tmpoli, Harold J., The Awakening of China in Archaeology. Further Discoveries in Honan Province Royal Tombs of the Shang Dynasty, dated traditionally from 1766 to 1122 BCE. External links Tsenzhou Shang City Site